Welcome into the Illini Enquirer podcast. And today on the podcast, let's switch it over to basketball. Yesterday, Ryan Easterling and I broke down what June and this huge recruiting reopening means for football, how they're approaching it. Let's shift over to basketball because basketball as well, they are able to host recruits. And in July, they are going to hit the road, which is Derek Piper's favorite time of year. And we're welcoming on Derek Piper, Illini Enquirer, basketball insider. Derek, how does it feel? Does it feel normal? Does this feel like it's kind of like, normality is back now that recruiting is back yeah absolutely this is a great time of year very busy very eventful as far as recruits and uh, excited about the visit slate coming up for Illinois and, and just knowing that things are going to start getting rolling here and, and you're going to have a bunch of guys on campus and, and we'll be able to catch up with them and get their thoughts on Illinois and other schools in the mix and also the high school scene here in, in a couple of weeks when the open period, the live period, when all the coaches are out uh, and watching different recruits and finding different targets, guys that blow up on those AAU scenes, high school scenes, AAU will be in July. There is going to be a peach jam, which I was about to bring that up. I, I saw Pe fired up. I saw peach jam was scheduled. And I go, Oh, Piper's doing this <laughs> pump right now. Like that's, that's, that's your go-to event. I just hope I can get in the building. That, uh, that is my hope. But uh, yeah, that's, that's the spot I circle every summer. And the fact that it's going to happen is, is pretty cool. Stop on the way, get your hot chicken in Nashville. That's right. You know me. <laughs> You know me well. <laughs> We've been around this uh, a few times, so it's nice to have that back after after missing last year. So we will dive into that, but there are two things we need to dive into on this podcast and, and talk about because certainly fans are talking about it. Number one is it is now June 1st. Like recruiting is opening, and Illinois still has an assistant spot unfilled. Like that is not ideal. Right. I, I hate to steal Paul Kowalczyk's thing, and I don't think it's going to drive a dagger in the heart of the program, but it's not ideal to, to be sitting there without a third assistant. Maybe you can have, you know, Zach Hamer or somebody go recruit right now if you wanted to and get a waiver from the NCAA. Uh, but I, I know this was unprecedented. I know some of the times these take time. And the most important thing is for Illinois basketball to get the best hire for the long term. But it's not great not to have a, a full staff here, Derek. No, absolutely not. Not when this week you're going to have a handful of visits already. You're going to have Jaden Shoot, who's a big priority in-state target, come in this weekend. And if you don't have a full staff, that's not to say that he's going to be, okay, they don't have three full assistants here and, and a support staff role filled. Well, all of a sudden I'm not going to go to Illinois. But this is a time where you really want to be at full force and full strength as you're going through those visits as you're contacting the other recruits, you're going to try to bring in more for visits. Uh, so it's been essentially a month. I know that Chin and Orlando were early in May, but we, again, we've talked about, you kind of had their, that answer. You knew that they were out the door. It was just kind of that final week or so, just finishing up the details with them officially moving to Kentucky. So there's a lot of questions as far as, What's taking so long? Uh, are you holding out for somebody in particular? Are you being told no? Or are, are you having a struggle now? Because I think that's the perception is you're struggling to fill this last spot. And like you said, ultimately, the, the end result is the most important thing. And now I think timing is starting to matter now that's in June, especially here in a couple of weeks when you're going to be out on the road and you're going to be at these high school events and, and you need to be a full staff at that point. And Brad said that a couple of weeks ago to us. Uh, the importance of that in that part of the timing aspect. But uh, yeah, I think that we're, we don't really know. We're, we're just kind of waiting. And Brad, as we've talked about, has kept things really close to the vest. But man, it, it's hard to, when you're trying to get out there and get any kind of intel, any kind of information, it's all shut down and uh, there's just not much out there. And you would think that it'd be soon, but we have no idea. <laughs> Yeah, we're recording this at uh, about 11 a.m. on June 1st. So most likely, maybe this podcast will help Derek after the Memorial Day weekend. Maybe they're just waiting and maybe they announce it in the next day or so, or maybe in the next few hours, because that's usually what happens when we record these right. podcasts. But yes, I, th this needs to be done soon. And, and I, I do think there is a timing element of this now. But any speculation at this point about, is he missing out? Is he, you know, like, is he waiting for somebody? It is speculation. Because Brad has really kept this 
under wraps. And again, at the end of the day, you just got to get the best hire. I think they'll get somebody qualified, Derek, whether that's getting somebody who's a power five assistant now, whether that's getting somebody who's, you know, a a big East or or mid-major assistant who's ready for that next step. I have no question. They'll get somebody qualified. It's just like, I have no idea what Brad wants, what he's looking for, or who he's talking to, because uh, he's kept that under wraps. But without an assistant on June 1st, um, I think it's time to be like, okay, what what is going on? It, it's fine to ans- ask all those questions at this point, because um, it is it is critical to have full staff at this point. All right. Um, also, there are reports that, and these guys are both plugged in on the East Coast. I, I need to mention that. Andrew Slater and Adam Zagoria both reported last week that Kofi Coburn is staying in the NBA draft. They both got that at the same time. Uh, both released it on the same day within the same hour, I believe. So it's got to be coming from somebody close to him. Now, Kofi hasn't come out and officially said it. Illinois hasn't officially said something. But it wouldn't be a surprise if Kofi Coburn uh, stays in the NBA draft. But obviously, it has a huge short-term impact on Illinois, especially next season, Derek, because if Kofi Coburn comes back, I think you're a top 10, top 15 preseason team, and he's maybe Big Ten preseason player of the year, uh, All-American candidate. If he doesn't come back, you need to add somebody else in the post, um, and, and that post rotation needs uh, another big piece in it. Yeah, absolutely. And you asked Brad about that last week during the Zoom presser with him as far as the need at the five, potentially, with Kofi's decision, and he said it and, and didn't really dance around it. The fact that Kofi's decision and the way it's time, the timing aspect of it makes it tough for Illinois to sell somebody else on coming in, especially someone that would be an immediate impact in the case that Kofi were to come back and you have Omar Payne. That is part a dynamic that would be tough as far as selling someone uh, on that opportunity. But yeah, Andrew Slater and, and Zagoria very plugged into the New York scene. So I, like you said, wouldn't be surprised if it's coming from people around Kofi or, or, or those involved with him. So, uh, I mean, as we've broken it down before, Kofi's going to turn 21, just an all American. If he feels like he can get drafted, I would be, I am a little more surprised. This is coming out pre combine. I thought maybe you go to the combine, you get some updated feedback, maybe he shows really well there. It looks like he's, trimmed up a little bit, maybe he's a little bit more mobile and and has worked on his jump shot more because that wasn't really within the constraints of Illinois' offense. But uh, if he's ready to move on, regardless, if he gets drafted, if he doesn't get drafted, if he's in the G League, if he has to go overseas, I mean, he's going to make money playing basketball and be able to further his professional career. And you wouldn't necessarily blame him for that. The good news for Illinois is if you're if that is the ultimate decision – why not know now that versus a month and a half from now? So that, that puts them in a position where there could be some targets on the board now that wouldn't be, you know, weeks down the road, a month down the road. Sidney Curry is one that comes to mind, recent decommit from Kansas. And, yeah, you, you do need to further solidify that five spot. I think Coleman Hawkins can play some backup five, like actually the dynamic of the pick and pop and just something different. Although, as we've discussed before, if he's your five, you probably want a more prototypical physical foreman, which they've also kind of been looking at uh, as a need, as we we talk about on every podcast. So, uh, yeah, that, that's something they got to figure out here, and it'll, it'll be interesting. Yeah, I'm I'm sitting here, and I don't want to turn this into is a Co- is Kofi Coburn an NBA player? We've had that discussion so many times. He can find a role uh, if if he improves his game and is elite as a rebounder, is, is elite as a, a finisher around the rim. Um, but obviously, he's not a perfect fit right now for the NBA. But what this means for Illinois is I agree with you, Derek. Like I think Omar Payne, I don't know how great he'll be his first year, but I think that's a guy I can go into battle with in the big 10 as my starting center, be a great shot blocker. Like I I don't use this word frequently, but he is an elite shot blocker Uh, average more blocks than, than Kofi did, even though he played half the time uh, of him. So his shot block percentage is, is really, really good. He's more mobile defensively. He's more versatile defensively than Kofi would be. So that can change things you do there. Uh, You put him with Coleman. That's a long athletic uh, four or five combo, but Coleman at the five, if Coleman's going to be a five uh, offensively or, or however they do it, they need another post player. Right. Like I, I, th- I think they need another center, probably almost more than a four, because I can play Grandison with pain. I can play, um, you know, Coleman with with a, a shorter but stockier kind of guy. And that's why Sidney Curry really interests me uh, kind of as this low post score offensive threat, 
really good rebounder. So if Illinois got in the mix with him, it makes a lot of sense. Greg Lee, the Western Michigan transfer, is going to make an announcement here soon. I think he'd be a guy who can be in the rotation. I don't know if I'm expecting a lot more out of him, but I mean, that would at least give you another or body because behind those guys, it's it's Benjamin Bossman's Verdonk. And no matter what we think he can be, he hasn't shown anything really yet on the court, mostly because of injuries. Uh, and then Brandon Lieb just is a year away, at least in my opinion. So um, they need to find that guy. And if Kofi is in, um, that would be good for Illinois to know that now so they can really make the pitch uh, to guys like Curry or like Lee or whoever uh, is available on the transfer market. Yeah, absolutely. And there, there is a reason why we're not bringing up BBV, you know, right away in terms of, oh, if Kofi's gone, well, this guy's here. I mean, he played spot minutes to – bang with Garza for 60 seconds last, you know, last year. And it's just not there. And, and I hope it works out for him. I hope he can stay healthy throughout a full off season, going into a year, develop and, and start to be the kind of player that a lot of people hope to even half, half as much, whatever that may be, uh, just to be someone that you can throw out there for 10 minutes a game, 12 minutes a game. Uh, but we, it's hard to have that expectation. And you mentioned Greg Lee. I think he'd, be a depth piece in my opinion as well. I'd still prefer personally, just based on what I've watched the tape I've seen of him and just kind of studying his game. Coleman would be the preference to me at the four, even a Grandison. Greg Lee can shoot the mid range pretty darn well. He rebounded it well in the Mac. Again, that's, that's a different level. Uh, and there are some limitations to his game. Uh, athleticism isn't great. Defensively, he struggled uh, in terms of the, the metrics and some of the things that you kind of see on film. So uh He'd be okay. He'd be a decent grab. Sidney Curry really is intriguing to me. Obviously, good enough to go to Kansas. Very physical, athletic, rebounder, ferocious dunker. And if you're playing him, however you want to designate it, four or five, I think him and Coleman would be a really good pairing down low. And it, it would just give you a nice mix there with Payne as well. And if Payne's Marcus Bingham, I know offensively that's not necessarily what you're kind of looking for, but a shot blocker, a rebounder. You could get away with that if you have, you know, the kind of perimeter scoring that Illinois should have next year. I don't know if I buy the Underwood saying he's got the game to extend to the offense. Maybe he does, but we haven't seen it, right? Like, I think Jeff Alexander said that to Lauren Tate this week, too. Like, I, I haven't seen it. So, like, it hasn't happened on the court. I don't know if I'm counting on it. It'd be a nice surprise. But, yeah, like, Marcus Bingham, I think Payne's a little bigger than him. Right. But, like, yeah. that kind of player, like, I always thought Bingham, I'm like, man, that guy – uh, can change games uh, defensively and he's really tough to stop when he gets the ball around the rim just because he's uh, so bouncy. So yeah, I think, I, I think pain can even be better than that because he's a little bit more physical, but um, that's a good piece. You just need a rotation. Right. And, and I think Coleman, I, I agree with Brad, even though Brad sees him more like, I think Coleman Hawkins has a bright future if he continues to progress. And I just love the skill set plus the length and athleticism combo. But you need somebody else to help you there, uh, along with Jacob Grandison uh, playing some minutes at the four. Like you just need somebody else to kind of help finish that rotation. All right, Derek, let's talk about Illinois hitting the recruiting trail or just hosting some prospects here. We'll talk about what they have planned for June, who is coming, what this month means. We'll talk about that next in the Atlanta Enquirer podcast. All right, Derek, uh, Illinois football is hosting so many recruits for official visits, unofficial visits. Uh, a lot of basketball programs are starting official visits here early. It's kind of like there's a rush to get these officials in after, you know, 15 months of not being able to go anywhere. So how is Illinois uh, uh, approaching this June where they can finally host prospects? Yeah, they're going a little bit differently in terms of not having a rush to use the officials. I know that if there's an instance where it's between getting a prospect on campus and not getting him there, maybe they would pull the trigger on an official or if they kind of get the read that a recruitment could be shut down this summer, which is that's kind of what you got to be able to figure out, they would then go to the official. But their hope is to stack it up with unofficials this month, just get them on campus, get that face-to-face -face contact, show them for those that have never been there, uh, and there's going to be, you know, the vast majority, that's the case, if not all of them, uh, just allow them to see the campus and then bring them back where in the fall, the atmosphere with this, you know, the student environment and uh, a football game, a home football game, really kind of lean on that fall. It, also timing wise, if it is more normal, that's when decisions are made. They're 
September, October, they don't want to use that bullet, you know, so to, so to speak, as far as the official in June, if the decision is going to come later on. And you can do that if someone is closer to home and maybe the timing doesn't matter as much in terms of in-state or in the Midwest. But for a guy like Cam Corrin from down in Texas, who fans are really excited about, he's going to have a couple of officials here coming up this month. Illinois isn't going that route. They want to be later down the road. He's going to take one in the fall. They want it closer to when he's going to side. And then just to, for a kid from Texas who's only going to get one shot to see Illinois for a 48-hour period, why not see it when the campus is hopping? And it's that's what school life's going to look like for him versus coming in June where it's just, well, right now, no basketball players aren't there. No one's really there. Or, you know, it's workouts and the campus life is a little bit more dialed down because it's the summer. Yeah. What do, what do you think of that? Like, what do you think of the risk reward of that? Yeah, I think that it'll be easy, maybe hindsight, if someone pops in the summer and, and you didn't get that official. I, I necessarily, uh, for the most part, think it's a good idea. And, and you have someone like Jaden Shu comes to mind, who's never been to Illinois. He's about to go to Michigan State for the fourth time, and he's taking his official to East Lansing this month. That says to me that Michigan State's ready to try to close it down which yeah. I'm sure they're, they're going to, that's going to be their intention for Illinois. I think they need multiple visits. So then if they were to go official visit this weekend versus the unofficial, then he goes to Michigan state. If he still ends up at Michigan state, that's where he's going to go regardless. Uh, so I'm okay with them trying to, you know, get him on campus at least once for the unofficial say, Hey, let's save the official, make sure you're going to be there for X game. Maybe it's Illinois, Nebraska, where it's going to be, the season opener, uh, you're going to have a lot of fans there. There's going to be a lot of excitement. It's like, hey, man, you're going to – why not come an hour, hour and a half, whatever it is, uh, down south to be here for that environment, then make your decision if that's the timeline that it's going at. So I, I don't necessarily blame them. It, it is interesting, though, because, like you said, there are a lot of basketball programs getting aggressive and feeling, okay, this is our first opportunity. We need to just use up those officials and and let it roll. But uh, – I as of now, I, I think that it's a it's a solid approach for Illinois. I understand why they're going that route. Yeah, and it's a little different approach than than previously. Remember the years we were counting officials and and <laughs> judging like, should you really use that one on that guy? Like, you going to have any chance at him? I was it. Oh man, Elias Veltonen. I got Veltonen. Yeah, Veltonen is that it? Um, it was like. Yeah, everyone thinks he's going to UConn and I think he went to UConn. Um, I don't know think he lasted very long there, but yeah, I, I think it's a, it's an interesting approach and maybe they're thinking patience is the best thing here. And it, it does make some sense. I mean, man, I lived on campus sometimes in the summer and I loved it because it was a little bit more chill. Um, but then, you know, you can't compare with some of those football atmospheres or, or even the basketball game atmospheres where you can host those guys uh, for official visits. Uh, also, a lot of 2023 kids, uh, Derek, coming through town. Who are the guys that you think are the biggest uh, that Illinois is, is getting on campus here, the most intriguing for them? Starting here today, uh, they're starting off with a big one, a top 25 caliber guy in 2023 class from the state, Jeremy Fears, who was at Joliet West transferred to La Lumiere in Indiana when there was a lot of uncertainty with the high school season. So he wanted to make sure he was going to have a high school season and transferred uh, to play at La Lumiere. And he's coming in today, Brad Beal elite player. Uh, he's a dynamic floor general, just a really, really gifted passer, great in transition. He just fits that mold where Illinois has been fantastic in that up-tempo, fast break game. You've had those attacking style guards, Io and Curbelo. Andres Feliz, he really kind of fits – that really fits his game in terms of being able to make those kind of plays. And he does need to get better with his jump shot, but he's just so quick off the dribble, can get to the rim, can break you down. And the way he processes the game – I mean, he, I don't want – I hesitate to say, like, Curbelo-like because that's just such a, a crazy level. But this guy isn't even – hasn't even played a game high school-wise as an upperclassman. I mean, he's going into – his junior year, maybe doesn't have some of the same flash, but he can, he can dish it from a variety of angles and a lot of just in his bag, as they would say. So uh, he's an exciting one and he's going to take visits to Indiana Gonzaga. He's trying to get to in June as well. And, and uh, Auburn is another one. So he's got a lot of high major interest and in, well, offers already and Illinois getting his first recruiting visit is, is a big deal. You didn't cop him to Jason 
Jason Kidd, excuse me, uh, which is uh, something we've heard before uh, that didn't work out too well. Uh, 2022 kid I want to ask you about is Jaden Epps. Um, reopened his recruitment, and Illinois seems to be right in the mix of things. What can you tell us about Jaden Epps' game and, and where kind of Illinois is stacking up in that recruitment? Yeah, East Coast Guard, who's top 50 in the class in 2022, top 50, top 75, a really good score. Very, again, another attacking guard who uh, Eric Bossy, our national guy, is confident to Frank Mason, and he actually plays – for the same AAU program as Frank Mason. The problem is when you're going to make that comp, Kansas also just got re-involved or involved when he opened it up, decommitted from Providence. We know where Frank Mason ended up. He went to Kansas and was an All-American to caliber guard. So uh, Kansas is in on that one, Illinois. Uh, those seem to be early on, early indications to, we can at least say two major players. Chester Frazier had a very good relationship before you know, ultimately committed to Providence, obviously with Chester, was Virginia Tech. Uh, he's going to take a visit later on this month here in a couple of weeks. So he is a very big time guard in that class. I know that Bossy's high on him. He might even be shooting up in the rankings a little bit more. Uh, but someone that's very good in the pick and roll, that can hit the mid-range jumper, hit the three, just a big time scorer at guard uh, who could obviously fit into that mix. Someone that could play. I mean, are you going to have Corbello? Uh, I guess you're trying to figuring that out down the road, could play with him in a multi-guard lineup or be that point guard that could have the ball in his hands and really make things happen. I don't worry about that. Uh, I own, I own no. both survived <laughs> well together. And, you know, there's so many programs, whether it's UConn, Louisville, we've, I've gone over that list before of two lead guards who can play well together. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think he's a really exciting one to watch here. Um, so how do they approach the rest of this? Like, what does this month mean? Uh, for Illinois basketball, Derek, to me, it looks like it's just getting set up. Like, because this is really, I know that March, right before everything shut down, they were starting to capitalize off all the buzz. Now, they didn't land a lot of those kids who visited for those officials on, uh, what was it, March 1st and March 8th of 2020, the Indiana and Iowa games, which are unbelievable atmospheres, great buzz around this program. They have been able to have kids on campus since then. So for me, there's a great opportunity to start selling the last two years of success, selling it in person. Um, but what does this mean for Illinois? Because it feels like it's just kind of setting up these relationships. Yeah, I think you make a great point there. It's easy to kind of forget about and dwell on that Loyola game and the way it ended. And like, obviously, that was a big part of, uh, you know, the season and, and just kind of the, the ultimate climax of it or anti-climactic ending to it, but just like you said, the past two years and being able to bring in recruits and, and show them whatever it may be and show them the Big Ten tournament title banner, uh, you know, talk to them about IO. I mean, if you're talking, if you're talking guards, like recruiting nationally, everybody knows who I assume is and, and the fact that, uh, you know, he's an NBA prospect, the Jacks go in the first round, but yeah, just sell your program, get that face-to-face -face contact. I think that's really important finally uh, you know, we know how it is maybe, well, I don't know if we do to hop off zooms and see each other. I don't think we do. Uh, but those people, the, uh, the coaches and, and the recruits are going to have a chance to finally do that. So get that in-person relationship, show them physically what Illinois looks like the campus, the oven renovations are, that are starting to go on and, uh, take them into the state farm center. So, uh, all of that with 2023 in particular, it's just, laying the groundwork further and, and just for a guy like fear is really important to kind of maybe get that first visit. Uh, and then, yeah, in 2022, I guess while this is the first time you've been able to host visits and I mean, it is in 15 months, we're not all that far away from you're going to host visit this month. They're going to go on the AAU circuit in July. And then a lot of times they're ready for officials and it's, that's it. Like they're going to make their decision. So really gearing up for that and putting yourself in a good position. I think that that's important here as you bring in some of these priority targets in 2022 in particular. Yeah. We're just five months from the early signing period. Right. And that's, it kind of speeds up on you, but because these guys haven't been able to take visits, it's almost even more pronounced. And then with football, it's only six months uh, as well. I do have one idea for a great official visit weekend. If they want to set it up, Derek, um, if Kofi is staying in, uh, his jersey will be hung in the rafters or should be. He, he qualifies for it. Io's we know will. 
get those two on campus at the same time. Hopefully they're both in the U S get them on campus and have those guys raise their, their jerseys to the rafters while you got some top 100 kids in town. That might be good. That might be good. Pretty good idea. <laughs> that's a pretty good idea. If someone that's potentially signing late um, or even a, tw- a really priority 2023 for an official, that'd be a, a great idea. Or you could do it um, like in October, like if you have a March Madness event, right? Like, or not yeah. a, a Midnight Madness event, like maybe it's not midnight or whatever, but you have a football game, then you have a basketball kind of scrimmage thing afterwards. And then you get both those guys on campus, maybe before their season start or do it in September. Who cares? <laughs> like uh, just, just, I think you're, you're good enough. Now there's enough buzz with the program of those two guys were back to raise their jerseys after, or before a football game, that place would be packed, man. Yeah. I'm with you. Midnight madness. This is something I've been kind of not too much, actively advocating for but i've been ready i think this program has been ready as far as the excitement around i think people would show up it's not going to be one of those was the last uh, one the outdoor one on green street was that the last one we got i think it i think it was it yeah. was actually pretty cool yeah <laughs> uh snyder committed that day or he committed like after that didn't he yeah that's so right last. you get recruits to that and yeah i mean you're hyping it around Io and Kofi's return, it makes sense for them timing wise, probably more so than during the season, if they're going to be playing. So uh, yeah, let's get those up. And what are your thoughts? Because there's some basketball talk of, man, let's cross our fingers. We'd really like to have college game day week zero, Illinois, Nebraska. How big would that be for an Illinois football visit weekend? Huge. Huge. Like, well, you think about uh, basketball too, like you could surround that, right? Yeah. Like- you can get a bunch of people on campus for that. Like Illinois just doesn't have, I don't know if ESPN will pick them. I mean, it's obviously the best game of week zero. I don't know if they'll just be in studio or they'll go uh, to some random place, but uh, even if it's like Fox kickoff or, you know, BTN or, or something around that uh, it's obviously not game day, but like, yeah, you got to sell the buzz of being like the only, the only thing on TV that week. So yeah, I think basketball should take advantage of that as well. I, I would expect that's a, that's a big weekend for them. Yeah. They're hope, they're hoping that is, I mean, it's going to be hyped up as a big 10 game. Uh, like you said, the, the, really the, the biggest thing going that first weekend of football. So, uh, but yeah, if Herbie decided to stop in town, Reese Davis, uh, I know that they would try to take advantage as much as possible. Absolutely. Yes, they should. All right, Derek Piper, um, Let's uh, try and get some credentials for Peach Jam, and let's let's book those hotel, man. All right, perfect. Sounds great to me. Thank you, Derek. Anytime, man.